we're talking about energy efficiency, the decrease in the use of power, which is really a commodity, isn't it? The lithium market has stabilized to some extent and companies like Albemarle and Arcadium Lithium can start to rebuild after this most recent boom bust cycle. Welcome back to Chipstock Investor. Today we're going to be talking about lithium stocks, Arcadium Lithium and Albemarle. Now, as many of you may know, we have this little basket of lithium stocks. Of Albemarle, of course, our bigger play, Arcadium Lithium, previously known as Livent, uh, which after it merged with Alchem became Arcadium Lithium early this year. Berkshire Hathaway, we talked about in previous videos how they're making some incremental bets on lithium. But Casey, we're going to talk a little bit about the secular growth trend that we're actually betting on here, because it's more than just lithium, right? We're not like Tesla super fans or electric vehicle super fans. This is really about a long term, I guess we could probably say ultra long term bet on greater energy efficiency. And maybe I'll also add, in addition to Berkshire Hathaway on being on this list, we also have a natural gas and hydrogen stock basket, you could say, that includes Berkshire and air products and chemicals, ticker symbol APD. That's a different discussion, but let's talk about the secular growth trend that we're actually thinking about when we say lithium stocks. We're talking about energy efficiency, the decrease in the use of power, which is really a commodity, isn't it? We all need electricity to function in every aspect of our life. And so this has been a secular growth trend for decades. I'll read you an interesting statistic that we pulled from author Vaclav Smil, and we'll link that in the description below. He said, stated in the value of dollars in 2019, U.S. residential electricity was around $4.80 per kilowatt hour in 1902, and it was only around $0.13 cents in 2019. Incredible difference. Yeah, that is deflation at its greatest. That's an absolutely incredible statistic. Now, many of you may argue that actually electricity costs have increased over the last few years. And that is true due to multiple factors, including incorporating green energy sources into the electric grid like wind and solar power, which have not achieved the efficiency of fossil fuels, at least not yet. The cost of power has risen in the last few years. And it is possible that it will rise even more as more power demands like AI data centers increase. Yeah, the point here, new tech is always disruptive and there's kinks that need to be worked out. As investors, we think in terms of months and years, which is a mistake because we have to think about this stuff in terms of decades. The most impactful investors think that way. The most impactful business leaders think in terms of decades. Difficult concept to wrap our mind around. But at any rate, we think the long-term trend towards driving down or deflating the cost of electricity in inflation-adjusted dollars will eventually continue. And paired with that, new infrastructure technology, like chips, of course, semiconductors, will continue to enable us to do more with less power consumption over time. So lithium is but one character, I guess you could say, in this larger story. Now, of course, Casey, whenever we're talking about lithium stocks, of course, where everyone defaults to is electric vehicles. And that's fair because a lithium ion battery has much, much, much more lithium in it than a smartphone or even a laptop battery. And then even like energy grid storage solutions, the big battery packs or mega packs that are getting plugged into, especially things like wind generation, solar power to help keep that energy stored for when it's actually needed, not just when the wind is blowing and when the sun is shining, it has much more lithium. So that's what's driving demand right now. And so let's start with that. Albemarle mentioned this, and this is, I think, the biggest takeaway here because the talk is... Well, electric vehicle sales are dead. 
that's not really actually what's happening in spite of what most media outlets would have everyone believe. Yeah, absolutely. This slide that Albemarle provides is really important because it gives you a bigger picture of the actual global EV demand. On the very right side of the chart, you see that 10% of global sales is in North America. That's where many media outlets are saying that EV purchases are dead. But if you slide to the left, you see that Europe is actually 20% of the global market. China is 60% of the global market. And finally, if you go all the way left, global EV sales up 21% year to date in 2024. And you can see that it has increased steadily since 2022. Yeah, it's not as fast as growth as what some were expecting in 2023, as we were kind of thinking about initial forecasts for 2024. North America is to blame higher interest rates uh, because of the Fed keeping rates higher for longer, uh, high sticker prices on EVs versus in China, where there are a lot of much more affordable models like, of course, from companies like BYD. At any rate, this also kind of helps explain why China is making such a big sweeping bets on power chips, power semiconductors. Again, probably a discussion for another time. The US really, really fixated on this AI thing with export controls on AI chips to China. And meanwhile, there's this other battle going on that the US is very much losing right now. And no one's talking about it much. Uh, a lot of power chip manufacturing is headed for China. And it's because of this exactly right here, electric vehicles and a lot of other power applications. And probably in five years time, a lot of people are going to be sitting around outraged that we let China take all of the ch power chip manufacturing away from the United States. Okay. End of mini rant. Let's continue. This helps explain a lot. I guess that's the point here. Yeah, absolutely, Nick. Thank you for not going any further into that rant. I was going to have to shut it down. But the, let's take a look at this next slide from Albemarle. This slide helps paint that picture even further. You can see that Albemarle still expects a 10 to 20% year-over-year -year growth in 2024 of volume of lithium sold. And they still expect around a 20% CAGR through 2027 of that increasing volume of lithium. We have a bit more detail on Albemarle over on the Discord channel. You can subscribe to that either here on YouTube or over on our Kofi shop, just five bucks a month. Remember, volume growth still very much on the rise. The ultimate revenue and profit for Albemarle will ultimately depend on lithium market prices. And of course, the story all of last year was that absolute collapse in lithium prices back to where it was, almost to where it was in 2020. It looks like market prices are now holding a skosh higher than they were in 2020. So that's good. That, that paints a better picture for Albemarle's revenue generation this year. There is the fallout for Albemarle's free cash flow. Now, there was incremental improvement in the first quarter of 2024 but you can see free cash flow still deep in the negative. And that's because they are still investing in new mining projects to support that future expected increase in volume sold to their customers. These are long-term contracts that they have with battery manufacturers and automakers. So they have a lot of visibility on where the volume is headed but they're going to have to spend money on these mining projects to get them up and running. So we have this dip in free cash flow, but management confident that the bottom for lithium prices is now in the rearview mirror. It looks like we have a constructive, more stable market moving forward, and that should lead to incremental improvement in Albemarle's gap net income and free cash flow going forward. Casey, let's pivot to Arcadian Lithium, the small cap business in lithium. This is part of our small cap basket where we have usually no fewer than a couple dozen of small cap bets. This is one of them. It was livent last year. We've been nibbling after the merger with Alchem, Arcadium Lithium, Alt-M on US stock exchanges. This is the first quarter they reported after combining the two businesses together. Yes. After the merger, Arcadium Lithium 
posted near all-time highs for revenue. And this is mostly because we have two companies merging. You can see total revenue came in at $261 million. But one important metric that we can take a look at is both the gap earnings per share and on an adjusted basis, earnings per share were both in positive territory. You can see gap one cent adjusted at six cents. And then here is a chart for free cash flow for Arcadium Lithium. And you can see free cash flow has dipped significantly in this last quarter, but ultimately it's the same story as Albemarle. They are expanding. They expect 1.6 billion in total CapEx from 2024 to 2026 for some expansion projects. Now, the upshot to this, because this chart is really, really ugly, and we'll talk in a moment how this affects the balance sheet for Arcadium Lithium. But the upshot here is capital expenditures are expected to decline for the remainder of 2024. So there were some charges in the first quarter related to the merger of the two businesses together that kind of elevated CapEx and made free cash flow worse than it would have been otherwise. Yeah, as you said, Casey, Arcadium Lithium, now this vertically integrated business. They have the lithium mining operations from Alchem, now combined with the old Livent lithium processing and refining operation. It's just going to cost money to expand those projects to, again, just like Albemarle, meet that roughly 20% expected CAGR in volume of lithium products sold over the next few years to support electric vehicles, bigger batteries for the energy grid, so on and so forth. Where are they spending that $1.6 in CapEx? Here it is. This is the slide that shows us where they're spending all of that money. You can see currently they have some facilities in Argentina, Olaroz, and Phoenix. They plan on making expansions in Saldavida and then also in Canada at Namaska and Galaxy, which is in James Bay. So you can see their 2026 projections to be a significant increase in their capacity. Yeah, 170,000. LCE stands for lithium carbonate equivalent. So the equivalent of what lithium carbonate spot price would be on a volumetric sales. Pretty big increase here. And this chart, Arcadium shows us here, excludes Mount Catlin, which is an old spotamine mine they have in Western Australia. In our previous videos, we discussed how much of the lithium market fallout last year was due to some very high cost spodumene production coming out of places like Africa, was getting shipped to China through supply and demand off kilter and sent lithium prices plummeting. Arcadium does have a bit of spodumene production here from Mount Catlin, but it's an old mine. They're slowly scaling that back. And in the time being, they're just selling what spodumene they can for a profit out of there. And so this chart excludes any sales from Mount Catlin. This is a pretty good looking chart. But the question now becomes, can Arcadium Lithium fund that 1.6 billion in expected CapEx from now until 2026? The short answer is yes, they believe that they have enough cash and enough lines of credit they can tap into the next few years to fund those expansion projects, but you can see the balance sheet here. It's not as pretty as it was before. Long-term debt for Arcadium Lithium, you can see 583 million. They have 473 million in cash currently on the balance sheet. So they really only have $110 million in debt. Yeah, not super pretty, but they do expect to be able to fund much of that 1.6 billion in expected capital expenditures with free cash flow. So again, much like Albemarle, they're expecting free cash flow to make a big recovery and they have cash and some lines of credit to finish the rest of the job. And also much like Albemarle, Arcadium started presenting us with these different scenarios based on different market prices for lithium carbonate equivalents for 2024. To be completely fair, this is a pretty pretty wide range between $15 and $25 a kilo of LCE. This is not exactly like a tight, a really, really tight defined outlook for 2024. But 
it, it's not bad. I think what they're showing us is some sort of worst case scenario and maybe a best case scenario at 25 kilos. And the good news is they expect their core operations to be profitable in either possible outcome. Ultimately, I think our final takeaway is that the lithium market has stabilized to some extent and companies like Albemarle and Arcadium Lithium can start to rebuild after this most recent boom bust cycle. You can see some of the positive market conditions that Arcadium mentions on this chart. The first, of course, being that the market demand is stronger than some headlines suggest. That's a very nice way of putting it. Yeah, that is a nice way of putting it, but it's true. And maybe just to go full circle, a lot of the demand is coming from China. And at some point, it would probably be really nice if other parts of the world started embracing some of, because this is not a perfect technology, but start warming up a bit more to the benefits of plugging in some of these big batteries into various energy consumption applications. We've been nibbling on stocks Albemarle and Arcadium Lithium recently. We plan to purchase a small amount again very soon, and then we're just going to leave it until late this summer. And then maybe we'll revisit where the lithium market is at that time and see where we want to go from there. Yeah, that's right. And this doesn't look like it's going to be this roaring bull market anytime soon for lithium. And that's actually okay. Stability is exactly what we want. It's hard to get with a commodity product like this. Lithium ultimately is a commodity. It's going to always fit into this commoditized part of the hierarchy of the economy. And it's going to take many years for the technology to mature and reach anywhere near the level of, let's say, efficiency that a lot of fossil fuels have. Companies have been working on the efficiency of fossil fuels and energy derived from it for many, many, many decades. And the very long-term promise of lithium is simply just that. It's going to help increase the overall usage of energy in a lot of different uh, applications. And a case in point is smartphones. The, the incredible capabilities that we now have in mobile computing, the small little ultra compact, super powerful computers riding around in our pockets is thanks in large part to lithium ion batteries. So the technology is going to continue to get the kinks ironed out of it. And long-term, if we just have stability in the lithium market, that's a fantastic place to be if we're putting money to work in this bottom part of the pyramid. We don't want boom bust cycles. I 100% agree. It's bad for the nerves. It certainly is. All right. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. If you haven't hit that subscribe button already, we really appreciate it. It's a free and easy way to support us here at Chipsock Investor. And as Nick mentioned, we have that membership here on YouTube or over on our Ko-fi page. You can find the link in the description and that gets you access to our Discord channel, which has all of our show notes and published manuals and a great community over there. So hope you can find some value in that. It's only $5 a month less than a Starbucks coffee. And those what? aren't that good anymore. Exactly. All right. We will see you again soon at Chipstock Investor.